So let's zoom in on some sweat that might be on the surface of your skin and zoom in at a molecular level. So we're zooming in at a super, super, super close up level over here. And what we've done is we've drawn the skin. And each of those circles, you can imagine, is a molecule of skin. And so we're even going into the subcellular level right over here. And, and I've oversimplified it, but it'll hopefully give you the idea. And each of these things right over here is a molecule of water. The blue is the, is the oxygen atom, and then the whites are the hydrogen atoms. H2O, I could even write it like this. H, you have two H's, and you have an oxygen. This, each of these is a molecule of water. What we perceive as temperature is really just the kinetic energy of these molecules. So each of these molecules, both on our skin and this water, or in the sweat, which is mainly water, they're all bumping around and moving around. And they all have a certain amount of kinetic energy, movement energy. Some of that, they're moving in a certain direction. Some of it might be vibrational. They're also rotating. And that total average kinetic energy, that's what we perceive as temperature. So all of these are moving around as well. Now, what we see as temperature is just the average, but all of them might be moving around in different, they all have different individual energies. Some might be bumping around faster, vibrating more, vibrating less. It changes as they bump into each other. So when you have water or sweat, on the surface of your skin, what's happening is, let's say your skin keeps getting heated up because your muscles down here someplace keep releasing energy. So these things get, they start moving around more and more and bouncing around and vibrating around. As they do that, they transfer some of their energy to the water. So the more that these bump around, they're going to eventually bump into this water. And then the water will have high energy. And so they will start bumping around more. So you might say, OK, fair enough. My muscles warm up my skin, and the skin warms up the water, but I don't see any heat being released. And the key here is, is the idea that these water molecules, on average, might have, we could view it as a temperature, but on an individual molecular basis, they all have a different kinetic energy. That one might be going really fast in that direction. This one might be going really slow. And what you're going to have happening, all of these water molecules, they are attracted to each other. They're, those are called hydrogen bonds. We talk about them in more depth in the chemistry playlist. But if they have enough energy, if they're going in just the right direction, they might be able to escape. So they all, have, they all are attracted to each other. They are attracted to each other a little bit. And that's why the water kind of, the, the water to some degree sticks together. So they are. They are attracted to each other a little bit. But if one of these molecules has enough energy, they can break free. And so the question is, well, which molecules are going to break free? Well, the molecules that are going to break free are the ones that have the highest energy, or an average, or most likely, the molecules that are most likely to break free. So let's say it's, we have a molecule right over here. If it has enough energy, if it has enough energy and it's going in the right direction, let's say this one has a lot of energy and it's going in that direction, it might actually break free and go essentially evaporate, become water vapor, and go and just escape from this little droplet of sweat. And so if the, if the molecules that have the highest velocity, the, highest, the highest kinetic energy, are the ones that are most likely to break free, what's going to happen is these break free. Well, you have all your highest energy particles, or highest energy molecules is the one that break free. So if those are leaving, then the average of what's left over is going to have a lower average kinetic energy, or a lower temperature. So on a molecular scale, what's happening is, is that you could view it as the, 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 the hottest particles are the ones that are most likely to leave. So you transfer energy to them. They bounce around. The hottest ones leave. They're the ones that mo are most likely to escape. And so they take all of that energy with them. And so whatever's left over will have, on average, lower energy or a lower temperature. So hopefully that makes sense. It's all about the heat getting transferred from your muscle to the skins to the water. And then the evaporation of the water is taking the most energetic particles away and allowing the whole, the rest of everything else to cool down.